but it's nearly Christmas time and we are today are going to think about the baby Jesus. So we're going to find some pebbles. We, we've got quite a few at home so I put them in here. Just you want them about that size, not too big, because the idea today is we're going to draw a little baby on here in swaddling clothes. So we're going to have a nice round face with some eyes, the baby face. And then we're just going to put some swaddling clothes and that's easier to do than you think because you're just going to do little stripes across like that. So there and there and there. He looks like the baby Jesus. And with this, you can just put this in your pocket and it will just remind you during this time of Advent and going up to Christmas that Jesus is there. And he is the real reason for our Christmas celebration. He's just a little reminder. But while we're thinking about babies, we're also going to think today about making some music. There's our little baby. And it'll just go nicely in our pocket, won't it? It won't, it won't get in the way. So that's good. So we're going to make some music for the baby. We're hoping that it's going to be soothing music. What do we think? So we are going to fill our jam jars with varying amounts of water. Now we can make this a little bit more special by uh, making this, oh, I'll choose blue because it's already open. So we could put some blue colouring in the bottom like that. There we go, we don't need too much. Whoops, Let's see if we can get a bit more out than that. There we go. So let's see what happens now. So if we put some water in there, will it go blue? Yes, there we go. We stir it up a bit, it'll go a bit more blue. There we go. Just so that you can see the water in there. And we'll have a little bit more water. Might be a good idea to cover your table with something so that it doesn't get too much. We'll put a little tiny bit in there. Now then, if we mash these, we can make different sounds and we can make up a little tune for our baby. Sure, you could think up a much better tune than that. We could do all sorts of lovely music, and if you had different coloured ones, then you could really enjoy yourself with that. And do you think our baby will go to sleep, or do you think it'll keep the baby awake? Well, try and make it as soothing as you can, and have a lovely Christmas when it comes. Um, hi, we're, today we're going to make um, some no-bake Christmas puddings um, and I know that not everybody likes Christmas pudding so we're making something that although it has got some of the elements of a Christmas pudding, um, i.e. some dry fruit, um, it also has chocolate in and biscuits and um, some other nice things on top, so some icing. So we're going to, first of all, we're going to um, melt together some um, chocolate and butter and I've got about 50 grams of butter and about 150 grams of chocolate. Sorry, I know I've just realised I have an extra bottle. So I'm going to pop those in the microwave, um, not for very long because you don't want the um, chocolate to burn. Um, probably 30 seconds to start with and then I'll, I'll mix it and see how, it, how it's going. <clears throat> So while that is um, melting, I'll just uh, go through everything else that I've got. I've got here um, 150 grams of um, digested biscuits, which I've crushed up um, until there are no big bits left. I've got 180 grams of um, dried fruit, and I've got a mixture of um, apricots, dates, 
and raisins and I've cut up, I've chopped the dates and the um, apricots so that they're really small and the same sort of size as the raisins. And I actually also mixed in about a tablespoon of orange juice just to soften up um, all of those dried fruits because they were a bit, um, they just felt a bit too hard and I, you don't really want to be biting into something really hard in this. Um, and then I've got um, the grated um, zest of an orange and I've got some vanilla extract and I'm going to use a teaspoon of that and um, ground ginger and I'm just going to put half a teaspoon of that in. So basically it's all mixed up together. So let's just see how the chocolate's doing. So that's nearly done. It doesn't take very, very long. So that's all melted together. I'm just going to give it probably another 10 seconds just to make sure it's fully melted. all melted now. I'm just going to stir it until there are no lumps left. So I'm going to stir in my um, orange zest and my vanilla extract. These are all things that will just give it the flavour of Christmas pudding without necessarily the, um, the sort of stodginess of Christmas pudding. Right, so just a little bit of ginger. And then the dried fruit. That's it. I'll give that a big stir. And then I'll add my biscuit. So it's a bit like making a, a chocolate tiffin. I don't know if you've ever made one of those, but that's uh, something that uh, my, my children like quite a lot because it's very sweet. <laughs> Plus you can um, um, divide it up into uh, small chunks so that so they can uh, have, a, have it as a treat at break time at school. Even my 17 year old likes to have a break, um, treat as, um, at break time at school. As most teenagers, he could eat us out of house and home. But uh, <laughs> if you make your own things, it actually ends up a lot cheaper. So I'm mixing that, and it actually looks quite dry, but we're going to um, form it into, um, into little balls to represent our Christmas puddings and uh, these would be really nice as a, if you're having a party, um, you go like maybe not this year, um, you could actually um, put them into little um, cupcake cases and um, serve them as a as something that you hand round to the party, like, like canopy. So probably about a tablespoon and just give it a, I have got nice clean hands, and just give it a squish together, pop it in your, your um, little paper case and this will probably, I think this, this amount will probably make 12 or so, maybe even more. So I'll just do a few and then we will um, decorate them. So hopefully those will hold together. And I think what you would do is um, actually put them into the fridge to, to set um, fully before you decorate them, but we haven't really got time to do that at the moment. So, so I've just done three, so I'll take, take those ones off. And then I'm going to decorate them with some um, chocolate, some white chocolate. 
So I'm going to pop that in the microwave and then wash my hands because my hands are all a bit sticky. At the moment. So I think this will probably just take about 30 seconds again um, to melt. in 30 seconds it takes a bit longer I always thought that my chocolate would melt faster but it's not <laughs> I'll give it another 30 and then to go on top um, where are they? I a while back um, well actually last year I managed to get these Christmas sprinkles um, and they happen to have some um, holly um, leaves on the, in them and uh, with some berries. But um, I think last time we made um, our shepherd cook, um, decorated our shepherd um, cookies and we used some uh, green fondant icing. So you could always, if you had bought some of that, you could always use some of that to um, make the leaves to go on top of the um, Christmas puddings. <clears throat> so. That looks a bit better. That's now melted. If you don't like white chocolate, you could use icing instead. So that's all nice and melted. <clears throat> and I'm just going to dribble a little bit of white chocolate on top. Mm. Not terribly well. <laughs> okay, so that's sort of to represent. I don't know what <clears throat> most people have with their. Sorry, <clears throat> I don't know what most people have with their um, Christmas puddings, but um, um, it's sort of to represent brandy butter or whatever um, that you would have on your Christmas pudding. And then I'm just going to pop holly leaf and some uh, little berries on the top of each one. Right, two more of those. See if I can get another holly leaf out. Well, that looks quite fun, I think. So, yeah. There we are. Okay, and I will then just pop those in the fridge to to melt so that the, the attempt not to melt to set <laughs> the opposite of melt um, to set um, and then hopefully um, in about an hour's time they will be suitable to eat. Okay, enjoy. Hi folks, thank you for connecting to Messy Church. It is great to be connecting uh, with you like this. But I've got um, something to talk about. Firstly, those no-bake Christmas puddings have just gone, blown my mind. They look amazing. So do make them when you get a chance. They look amazing. Thank you, Sarah, so much for doing that. Uh, I want to talk to you um, ab about Christmas for one minute, okay? And I just want you to think um, about uh, the present that you got um, three years ago. What was the present that you got three years ago? Can you remember it? Are you struggling to think? You're thinking, oh, was it the jigsaw? Was it the remote control car? Um, was it a Lamborghini? I, can you remember it? Um, sometimes you have to, I have to think, oh, was it this? Was it that? And I can't quite remember it. Uh, but the thing is, in maybe three or five years' time, in three or five years' time going forward, would we remember what we wanted now in this Christmas? You see, in Christmas, there's so much focus on presents and gifts and material things. Uh, I remember wanting a remote control car so badly as a kid. It was just, you know, I, it was just the thing that I had to have. And I got it. I got this remote control car and it went so quick and it was great. And I loved it. I loved driving it up and down. We, we lived on a street and uh, we used to... Uh, play on football on the street. It was quite a quiet street, and it was a long time ago, in 1842, when I grew up. So it was, it was, it was one of those types of streets, and it was great. Just 
razzling this remote control car up and down and annoying the neighbours because it was quite loud and whiny, making it do skids and, and all that type of thing. And I just wanted this and I got it and it was great and I loved it. But it broke. It broke and I was heartbroken because it just, it didn't work and, it, you know, we weren't going to replace it. And it was just unrepairable. It just, it just wore out from overuse. And the thing is, that's what happens with a lot of our material goods and a lot of the stuff that we get. And I think stuff is appropriate, whether it is, you know, jigsaws or Lego or I think one, one year it was a, a, a pooing unicorn that was the present to have. I, I have no idea, but what, whatever present we, we get, it, it, it becomes a point where it doesn't work. And the thing is, Christmas really, the heart of Christmas is about stuff that cannot be broken, that cannot be taken away. And I want us to, to focus on peace. Peace in our hearts, God's peace in our hearts. That's when God lives in our hearts. Joy, God giving us joy in our hearts because we know we're not actually getting our, our happiness, our joy from our remote control cars or our pooing unicorns. It's actually from somewhere far more deep and that is much more important. And also the last thing that I want you to think about is love. And the love that God had for us at Christmas, where he sent his only son to come and rescue us uh, from, our, from our sticky situation that we were in, from the mess that we'd made of the world, from the Bible calls it sin, to rescue us so that we don't have to, to suffer and be sad uh, and, and be in a, a, a tricky situation. So I want to encourage you this Christmas to look at Jesus, to look at what he means, to have his peace, to have his joy and to have his love in your hearts this Christmas. I'm going to pray and uh, we'll say amen at the end. Heavenly Father, I pray for everyone watching this uh, message church at the moment. God, I pray that you'd be with them, that you would fill their hearts, that in the tough situations you would uh, fill them uh, with your Holy Spirit. God, that you would bless them and that they might know you in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, thank you so much for connecting to Messy Church. Uh, we look forward to connecting with you in January again. So take care of yourselves. Bye.